Holy cow, this thing is hot. I had to keep turning it down. It is 220 only. You will need to pick up some wire, minimum flux cord to get going, and it only comes with the MIG gun. So if you want it for the stick or the TIG side of things, you'll need to pick up a Stinger and a TIG torch. It's got a nice dual fan uh, because, well, he is the number one killer for welders, so you should be able to get a nice, good uh, flow of air through this thing to keep it cool. It is one of the first ones I've seen with a dust freeze type switch. The first Vivor manual that I got only had like five or six pages, not that great. And this one, uh, definitely an upgrade, goes through a fairly good process of the setup and how to run each one. The one thing that I would say is missing is there's no suggested settings in the manual nor on the machine anywhere. The first couple welds, you're gonna be going blind and really just trying to work through the settings to get a good weld. The consumables that it comes with, I would say, are quite random. The tips are pretty common. You usually always get a couple with every welder. And then they threw in a couple cups for the TIG welding side. Maybe they just had a giant surplus and decided to throw some in. Over here on the left, this toggle goes between your MIG, shows a little cylinder right there, uh, and this is the difference in the wire diameter uh, in millimeters. So you got 0.8 and 1.0. Um, over here, it's got a little uh, cylinder crossed out, so this would be for your flux core settings. To go along with that, you can change the voltage and your wire speed up and down. Now notice those two are tied together. If you want to, uh, if you want to change that individually, you can come over here to the V right there. So you can change the voltage um, right there individually. This bottom selection is in then ductance mode. Over on the MMA, you're only controlling your amperage, and that's the same with the TIG. You're only controlling the amperage. And for all those times you forgot to charge your phone, well, it's got a little USB port you can plug something in to charge it while you're welding, you know? Like everyone does all the time. Started out the testing with some solid core MIG welding. I used some eighth inch coupons. Here, just doing a fillet weld on a T-joint. Kicking it over to the stick welding and holy cow, this thing is hot. I had to keep turning it down. My initial thoughts on some 7018 rod, uh, usually I can run on my Miller and Aesop about you know, 110, 120 amps. And this thing was cooking. I had to keep turning it down and actually found it to be about right at 60 amps. Switching over to TIG. One thing I did notice right off the bat is they say this is a lift style start. It is not. It is definitely a scratch style. Uh, lift is when you actually touch the workpiece and lift off and it will create the arc. This was scratch where you actually had to scratch it to get it going. But once you got the arc going, it turned out pretty well. I am still pretty new to TIG welding, so I'll take any criticism you got. Yes, this is one of the cheapest welders on the market. So you can't expect to have it be the Miller or Lincoln quality. You will have like some bows in the frame, you know, even the panel kind of goes in and out. But does that mean skip on this guy? Well, no. You might be like me, you know, 15, 20 years ago, I wanted to build a go-kart and I didn't have that much money. So I went out and I found the cheapest welder I could. If you're just trying to get in the door, you want to know if you even like welding or not, or maybe you want to step it up to see if you like TIG welding or not, yeah, these machines are great. They'll work for those one or two projects. Yeah, and on the other hand, if you're, you know, starting a business, you're looking for a machine for, you know, your, your mobile truck, no, you're not going to be getting the cheapest welder on Amazon. Go off, get your Miller, and you'll be good. That's all I got. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.